In this task, I'll perform a supervised classification of the multiband image. In a supervised classification, you choose the areas to be used as training areas for the analysis. Training areas should be homogeneous samples of a particular feature, such as the forested patch in this image. For each training area, the multispectral pixel values are extracted and used to define a statistical signature. This signature is a statistical representation of a particular class, which is used by the software to identify all pixels with a similar signature. For this task, I'll be using multispec, shown here with the image loaded. Multispec has two windows, the image window and a text output window, and I've arranged them so I can see both at the same time. To get started, I'll go to the File menu and choose New Project and click OK. And the project window opens on the right-hand side. Now I'll begin to select my training areas. These will be areas that are again homogeneous, so I'll start with this forested area. And when I'm doing these, I want to make sure I'm picking a patch solidly within that area. I don't want to get too close to the border of it. So I'll drag a box and click Add to List. The Define Class and or Field Description window opens, and I'll enter the class name of Trees and click OK. I'll go on to define five additional training areas, wheat, soil, light soil, no data, and weeds. When I'm finished, my map will look like this with my six training areas selected. So I can go to the project menu and click the greater than classes button and I'll see my classes listed there just to show that I've gotten them all entered correctly. To run the analysis, I'll go to the processor classify option and the set classification specifications window opens. I'll uncheck image selection and the other default settings are fine and I'll click OK. If I get this message to update project statistics before continuing, I'll click OK, and the analysis runs. Since image selection was unchecked, Multispec only estimated the quality of the training areas here. I'll examine the tabular output in the text window to evaluate my training areas. The training class performance table tabulates how the pixels of each field and class were classified. The reference accuracy column should be near 100% for all training fields. And you can see that they are. They're all 98% or above. Since these are good results, I'm ready to run my analysis. I'll again go to the Processor Classify option, open up the Set Classification Specifications window, and I'll uncheck Training Resubstitution. I'll check Image Selection. I'll check Disk File so that a disk file of the analysis will be created. And I'll cr check the Create Probability Results file. To run the analysis now, I'll just click OK and I'm prompted to save two files. I'll take the defaults and click OK both times. To see the results, I'll choose File, Open Image, and I'll change the files of type to thematic. I'll choose my output file and click Open, and I'll take all the defaults here. The results look much more realistic than those obtained from the unsupervised classification. To see the training areas superimposed on top of the results, I'll go to the menu bar and choose Project Add as Associated Image. And now I see my training areas on top. But since they're white, it would be nice to change the color. So I'll go to Processor, Statistics, and change the color to black. And click OK. Now I can see them a little bit better. This renderer does allow you to change colors. So I could go, for example, into trees and change it from yellow to green and change soil from orange to a brown color. And you can go in and change them to more intuitive symbols in that way. Let's examine the text output. I'll minimize this viewer, expand text output, and you'll see it's provided me with a table that shows the number of pixels in each class and the percent each class took. So you can see wheat covered 50% of the image. So you get some very valuable information from the text output. Now I'll add the results to QGIS and symbolize as I did the results of the unsupervised classification. So I'll click the Add Raster Data button and I'll choose that same output file and click Open. I'll go into the layer properties for this layer and again change it from single band gray to single band pseudo color. I'll choose random colors but again change the mode to equal interval 
and change the number of classes to six to match those in the analysis and click classify. And just as I did before, I'll be changing these values to even numbers. Now that I've done that, I'll click apply and I'll see the data symbolized in QGIS. And now I can tell what each class represents. So I can go in and change the label for this brown patch to trees. And I can go in and change the label for the remaining classes. I can also go in and change the color. So I'll change trees to a dark green. So now that I've changed the values, the labels, and the colors, I'll click OK. And now I've got a great map of the results of this analysis. In this lab, you've learned the basics of working with multispectral imagery in QGIS Desktop. You've learned how to access data processing tools and run an unsupervised classification on the imagery in QGIS. You've also learned how to do a supervised classification in multispec and bring the data back into QGIS for final mapping.